In the past year or two, there has been an influx in people and full-on movements formed against hustle culture. Enjoy eating shit and dirt and bleeding and the grind and don't give a fuck about what anybody else thinks. As the rejection of hustle culture rises, we have seen certain lifestyles and mottos like the soft life and I don't dream of labor enter into the mainstream. Hustle culture itself was quite controversial in the context of our current society under late stage capitalism. People just don't want to work anymore. They're tired, or at least they don't want to work a soul-sucking nine to five or a physically taxing minimum wage job. Some people don't even really have dreams or they don't have a dream job. There's no dream career that they aspire to. I don't really have a dream job. And I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I went to college because I grew up thinking that college was like the only option. I want to major in psychology, I remember. And I like everyone told me that psychology was not going to make me any money. So I switched over to marketing, which is basically like, the psychology of capitalism when you think about it. It seems like the idea of a dream job is slowly fading amongst Gen Z. In my perspective, it is a retaliation against the structure that has been forced upon us since birth to make money to survive and you know you pay taxes and then you die. In many ways, these movements make perfect sense to me on the surface, but they never truly resonated with me, especially the I don't dream of labor thing. I've always dreamed of labor. I've been dreaming of labor since I was like five years old, but this is because I am a creative and I've always planned on making a living off of my creative abilities. One, because I'm not good at anything else, and two, because I'm crazy enough to try and monetize off of my artistic talent. And I mean, it seems to be going pretty well so far. Thank you for watching. If it weren't for you all, these lights would not be on. Hard work has always been something that I value and I do believe is a virtue. To me, working hard is the only option. If I want to achieve all of the humongous dreams and goals that I have for myself out of this life, then I have to work hard. There is no other way. But I'm ready for that. I'm not afraid of hard work and I will go after what I want with everything in me until I die. And I've been that way since I was like five years old. I've always made this vow like I will do everything in my power to get what I want in this life. How do you stay driven? I'm gonna ask you a question. How don't you stay driven? Dedicating my life to creation has made it a lot easier for me to work hard because I'm working hard for something that I want and I know will get me closer to my dreams. But not everybody gets to work hard in order to get closer to their dreams in a way. Like some people just work hard and hustle because they have to feed themselves and their family and they don't have access to well-paying job that also feeds their soul. But my labor is a labor of love. Labor nonetheless, I'm still working, like I'm working right now. And I recognize my privilege as a YouTuber because, you know, I get to work from home. I pick my own hours. I don't have a boss. I get paid well for something that I love to do, which is very, very lucky and privileged. But on the flip side, I also have to acknowledge that everything that I have, everything I have in this room, like physically, and also every number that is associated with my YouTube page is because of me and the hard work that I put into growing this platform. I had to work hard to get this platform. I mean, it it certainly wasn't handed to me. And I was in school when I started my YouTube channel. So it was a lot. I was actually hustling too much. I was overworking myself to the point where I was breaking out. I was really depressed. I was resorting to really bad coping mechanisms. And it just, it was not a good look for me. I mean, I did get what I wanted in the end, but I had to do a lot of reworking and therapy. <laughs> Hard work, in my opinion, does pay off, but this is just based off of my personal experience. Being a black woman already is a full-time job, and to be a black woman on the internet comes with a whole set of rules or boundaries that makes things a bit harder sometimes. To be a Black creator, I mean, you have to put in a lot of work if you want to grow and create a platform from scratch. People automatically, like, subconsciously don't want to click on my videos because I'm Black and they would rather hear a white person talk about whatever. To have the platform that I do and to have obtained it in a short amount of time, honestly, is not just about luck or manifesting. It's just about 
working hard and staying committed to posting videos. But as my channel grew and I became more comfortable and spent way too much time on TikTok, my work ethic and my hustle mentality started to shift. My self-talk really changed for better or for worse. I became a lot more lenient and complacent with my daily productivity. Once I became a full-time YouTuber and I wasn't in school anymore, I lost any sort of of structure that I had to my life, which made things a lot harder for me when it came to being productive. I struggled with finding the right pace for myself. I'd find myself sitting on the couch and I'm like, oh, I have to film a video tonight. And I wouldn't film the video and I didn't really do much that day. But because I was listening to other people on the internet, I kind of got this messaging in my head going, well, I don't have to film a video. I should rest. Rest is important. I, yeah, I need to rest. I'm not gonna get up off the couch because I'm not a slave to capitalism. But you know what will keep you working hard? Living in the most expensive city in the world. Thank you, New York City, for always keeping a fire under my tush. I started to harbor a lot of guilt that was kind of swinging in two opposite directions. I felt guilt for not working as hard as I know I could be, but I also felt guilt for leaning into a hustle culture mentality. I even had friends at times tell me like, oh no, you don't pressure yourself into making more videos this month or don't pressure yourself into doing whatever work. But I think I needed that kind of pressure. And when I would express that, I was always kind of like talked down to just relax. And not to say any of these people were trying to discourage me from doing the right thing or sabotage me in any way. I think that just goes to show you how different our generation views work. And I think for the most part, it's good. Like there truly is more to life than working and making money, but there has to be a balance. And that's really what was like my aha moment. It seems so simple and straightforward, but it's just about balance. It's not about working yourself to the bone to the point where you're miserable, but it's also not about resting so much to the point where it's making you regress and it's making you feel unproductive or dare I say lazy. I don't really like the word lazy. I don't think it's very productive and calling yourself lazy is not going to make you work harder. But there comes to a point where you just have to go stop procrastinating and get the fuck up. That kind of thinking I feel like is frowned upon amongst like Gen Z TikTokers like just get the fuck up and work. I mean, Kim Kardashian got ate the fuck up for basically saying this same exact thing. Now, obviously it's different coming from her because she's a millionaire and having a millionaire say, some people just don't want to work nowadays is like so tone deaf. But I mean, we all have to work. That's the thing. Like to survive on this earth, you have to work or be a nepotism baby born into generational wealth. But that's not really the reality for most of us now, is it? Being driven, having work ethic, and prioritizing productivity in your daily life doesn't make you a slave to capitalism. It makes you focused and it makes you someone with goals. I remember when I was about 10 years old, I asked my father, what do you think your purpose in life is? And he sat there for a moment, thought about it, and he goes, to be a father. And that obviously made me feel great as a child, but it also made me realize that having a purpose in life I don't think that has anything to do with your job. Like it can, if your purpose in life is to be a sales associate, like slay. But I realized not everybody's dream in life is connected to career or their job. Someone's dream in life could be moving to a different country. It could be having children. It could be owning a farm. I believe that you can choose your purpose in life. I don't think everyone has a set purpose in life. I think we're all just born and we kind of figure out things that we love. But I think it's important to have dreams because without dreams, what is there to do? What is there to look forward to? My dreams are what keep me alive, honestly. It just seems like such an aimless life to not have any dreams or goals for yourself. But having dreams and goals doesn't have to be about making money or your career. Optimization and productivity are not bad words. And when I was in a phase of my life where I felt that way, I was just lying to myself. I was making up excuses for myself based off of what I was seeing on the internet to not put my all into what I'm doing every day. Living that way didn't 
bring me any peace. In fact, it brought me more anxiety because every night I went to bed, I was like, oh, I didn't do this or I spent too much time scrolling or I I didn't get my 10,000 steps in, whatever it may be. But now, like, the life that I'm living is the complete opposite of that. And um, I feel great. I feel like I'm on top of things. My life is together. Physically, I feel good. I work out every day at fucking 7 a.m. because I like that kind of thing. And I get so much more done with my time. Obviously, by waking up, but also, like, working out every day, it just gives me a lot more energy. Whereas, like, on days where I would just rest and my biggest accomplishment was like putting my laundry away that was very draining for me the more I was resting the more energy I was losing because I wasn't like exercising my mind or my body to be like a well-oiled machine I was just kind of like drudging through life also I had to reframe what I viewed productivity to be productivity isn't just working and doing something that makes you money. Productivity is eating, is exercising, it's sleeping, it's taking a walk, it's putting your laundry away, it's doing the dishes. Like all of these things are contributing to a productive and more streamlined life. I'm not working while I'm walking. I'm walking and I've been working out more and I've been playing more and I've been dancing more and that's all useful and that has to be balanced with that productivity. Because what you're looking for, eh? You're looking for improvement, but you're looking for sustainable improvement. And so if you push yourself too hard, you you destroy the sustainability across time. And, and you want this, that sustainability there. So you can't push yourself any farther than you're capable of going in the long run. When I was on the side of the internet that was telling me I didn't really have to do anything and I didn't have to dream of labor and I should rest, 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 take so many breaks, I was losing so much motivation. I needed to be pushed out of my comfort zone. That's the only way you can grow is if you go beyond what is easy and what is comfortable for you. And I feel like now we kind of live in a society where it's like, whatever makes you comfortable, And like in certain situations, of course, it's important, but I don't think comfort should be the priority in life. Stability, yes, but comfort, not always. I can't like have someone hold my hand. I need someone to push me, but that someone has become myself. I knew I needed a change when I became afraid of Matt Devella's videos. Do y'all know him? He's like the self-help productivity guru here on YouTube. I really like his videos. I've seen a bunch of them. There was a point in my life where I was afraid to click on his videos because I knew I was gonna hear something that I didn't wanna hear. Honestly, his videos have been really helpful towards me because he's not a hustle culture kind of guy. Matt Devella prioritizes productivity, but he also recognizes that rest is very important and it's important to not overwork yourself. Speaking of other YouTubers, moving on to I Don't Dream of Labor because I want to talk about this briefly and then I also want to talk about soft life and the whole that girl thing. Lynn Adkins, I think, brought up a great point in her video about not dreaming of labor. Success and what it means in America seeps into your everyday psyche, right? It's like, okay, if I don't go to college, I could possibly be a failure and be poor and homeless for the rest of my life. So let me go to college and get a degree. If I don't pass this class, then I may not get a degree and I could possibly be poor and homeless for the rest of my life, right? If I don't study for this test for eight hours today, then I could possibly not pass my class and possibly not get a college degree and be poor and homeless for the rest of my life. So the things that we do, we start to actually do them out of fear instead of out of love for them. I really enjoyed FD Signifier's video about this I don't dream of labor topic because he brought up some really interesting points through the perspective of a black man. This concept of divesting from work as some type of a radical idea. I mean, on one end, black men have been doing it forever, but on the other end, It's a real oversimplification of what it means to need to work to survive. The natural outgrowth of this movement from where I sit, no matter if it's men, women, black, Asian, white, whomever, participating in it is basically creating more capitalists that use their ability to effectively divest from work to just put them on the other end of the bourgeoisie exploitation graph. That's what hustling is kind of all about. Former drug dealer turned rapper, turned superstar, turned billionaire, mogul, 
Jay-Z, the patron saint of black capitalism. They all come from abject poverty and lack, and they all scrape their way into significant economic power and capital, black capitalism, that this is what black people and black men especially can use to lift themselves out of poverty. It's far more salient in black communities and among black circles than a lot of what I hear people talking about on the left. Unlike the left's like nebulous, never ending, one day we will seize the means of production, this directly engages with the reality of what oppressed people are going through. I don't dream of labor movement doesn't really work for me. It's just not inclusive of the reality for a lot of people that I see working or like needing work. So you remember the whole that girl trend um, that started like probably a year ago now. So that was really popular. It was all about, you know, drinking your green juices and going to Pilates and wearing your Lululemons. It's an aesthetic at the end of the day. A lot of people had a problem with this that girl trend because it seemed to be very unattainable and not realistic for the average person who isn't a rich skinny blonde white girl and you know to me the whole that girl trend was really confusing to me because it just seems like oh like they're just partaking in a healthy lifestyle. Like, yeah, okay. Exercising, waking up at a good time in the morning, making your bed. Sounds great. This idea of being that girl, it's kind of like being an it girl, right? It's its name puts this lifestyle on a pedestal that feels unattainable. When in reality, having a healthy lifestyle is completely attainable. The thing is, it's about an aesthetic. It's about a look, which automatically makes it unattainable because you can't live an aesthetic. Like that's not, if you want to be that girl just for the aesthetic, you're going to fail because really what you want is a healthy lifestyle. Um, but, you know, if he just said healthy lifestyle aesthetic, that's like boring and not fun and exciting and like catchy for TikTok and Pinterest. But you can't strive to live a life that looks like a Pinterest board because that's not real life. But you can strive for a healthy lifestyle. Everybody is capable of doing that. A healthy lifestyle can look like many different things. It can look like an aloe yoga matching set and cacao powder, or it can look like an elderly Asian woman doing Tai Chi at her local park. Both of those things can represent a healthy lifestyle, but one is more visually and aesthetically pleasing than the other. The whole that girl thing also has a lot to do with consumerism, which is obvious because it's an aesthetic. If you want to achieve a certain aesthetic, you usually have to spend money. Honestly, what inspired me to make this video is the fact that one day I woke up and I realized, oh my God, I'm turning into that girl whatever that means. I am wearing an aloe bodysuit right now for the sake of this video, but also because I think they're cute and I like to wear them when I work out. I drink green juices sometimes and eat kale salads because I care about my physical and mental well-being, believe it or not. It doesn't seem as complicated as I thought it would be. But again, you know, I also have the money and the resources to buy cute workout clothes and go to a nice gym, you know? Feeling a proximity to that girlness really opened my eyes especially to like the whole soft life thing I realized like oh I think you could consider my life soft a soft life I actually quite like the soft life idea because it seems to be pioneered by black women I see a lot of black girls talking about the soft life which really resonates because you know as black women we have to just work hard in general in life and like I said being a black woman is a full-time job so we deserve to live in softness and live in ease but honestly the soft life requires hard work it requires work ethic and discipline and focus it's rare that a black woman is just handed everything in life and in order to have the soft life of resting and relaxing and having self-care days and going to Pilates. How many times have I mentioned Pilates? Oh my God. Um, I do love Pilates though. In order to go on these nice vacations and to take time for yourself, you have to work hard to get to that point. You have to set up your life in a certain way to where you have that flow of not only income, but also time. Like time is a commodity. Time is a resource too. If you're like a single black mother in Detroit, I don't know why I said Detroit, but you don't really have the time or or resources to get a massage or get your nails done. And if you are in a situation like that or you come from poverty, you have to work really hard to rise in your socioeconomic status. 
I feel I live a soft life. I mean, I work hard, but I also have the time and space to rest when it's necessary and do things for myself. But I do think about the fact that I was born middle class. Um, I never like truly had to worry about money. My parents were always able to feed me, put a roof over my head. I went to a nice school. And now I, I feel like I've picked up where my parents have left off and I've been able to survive on my own, not just survive, but really thrive on my own. Um, and be self-sufficient and independent. But I was born into a set amount of circumstances. I was born into an environment that allowed me to grow into the person I am today. It's a lot easier to get to upper class if you started at middle class. If you're starting at lower class or poverty, getting all the way to upper class is going to be near impossible because poverty was not built to be broken. I hope we can get to a point where like, productivity or living a healthy lifestyle isn't like a triggering thing for people. As long as we're in this capitalist society, we got to find a way to work, sustain ourselves, but also find joy in our daily lives and find peace. It's okay to work hard. It's okay to hustle. It's okay to be productive. All of those, all of those things make you a better person, in my opinion. Exercise your mental toughness. Break out of your comfort zone, but also be kind to yourself. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on productivity and how I implement it in my daily life, there is a vlog coming very soon where I talk all about how I stay productive and how I learned how to love working out. Um, go check out my day in the life vlog and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Baby, you couldn't let me be.